a plague of unfixed recalls. It's kind of the thing in the industry. It's kind of the norm. Tesla gets a lot of heat for having so many recalls, but they get it because they're easy to do and they're already done. What's this? What's this about unfixed recalls? Hmm. I'm Brian. Welcome to my Tesla weekend. Quick thanks to the newest uh, Patreons, Sam, Chap, Scott, and Chandra. Appreciate you guys stepping up and helping me keep the channel running. It means an awful lot. So yeah, a lot of recalls out there. Some of them quite important. Things like, uh, you remember the GM recall from, from a couple years ago? The solution was don't park your car inside. For months and months, they had no solutions to this. It just kept dragging on. Just don't park it within 50 feet. Oh, and your charging cable is only eight feet long. Hyundai and Kia have recalled a half million vehicles due to fire risk, urges owners to park outside. That's a familiar story. Apparently, Kia and Hyundai uh, famously have fire problems and not specific to their EVs. Their EVs actually do a little bit better. We hear about these. There's a lot of recalls we don't hear about. Half a million Ford Escape and Bronco Sport SUVs recalled over fire risk. Bear found out about this because he had one on Turo and they messaged him saying, your car has been delisted. Can't list it, can't rent it out until it's fixed. Three months it took him to fix it, three months. That include them getting a fix figured out and then actually being able to get into the service center. Recalls, kind of a big deal. So Jack Ward, fire consultants, has a list of vehicle recalls for fire. This is just for fire. It's very common. Mercedes, Jeep, Hyundai, and you can go down, it's endless. Land Rover, uh, yeah, Jaguar, uh, Porsche, so many. Uh, Polaris is in here, a bunch I've never heard of, but it just goes on and on and on. Polaris, there it is. What else we got? More Kias, of course. Lincoln Navigator. Kia again. It just goes on. It's a very long list. Crazy how little you hear about them. I hear a lot about fire recalls and just recalls in general now from Tesla people on Twitter because they're saying, oh, if recalls are so critically important, I guess we should mention them regardless of the manufacturer and not just when it makes Tesla look bad. But here's the thing. Can car companies let known defects go without a recall? This is a pretty good one from How Stuff Works. A recall occurs when a defect becomes known. You can figure out a process to get it done. You can issue a voluntary alert, recalling, uh, alerting owners of the affected cars, or go to the nearest dealership, have it fixed, or they can just hope the problem goes away. But the problem doesn't go away. That is the problem. And we've seen this before. We've seen it many, many times. If I went and looked up my vehicle, my Nissan Quest, to see if it had any recalls, and it doesn't, which is comical. The transmission is a joke. The transmission should have been replaced. It was a poor design, and it doesn't work right, ever. That's a known issue, and we're not going to recall it. It's not a safety issue, <laughs> apparently. It is a material defect, but it's not going to make you crash, so... Hmm. Remember this one? A new car built by my company leaves somewhere traveling at 60 miles an hour. The rear differential locks up. The car crashes and burns with everyone trapped inside. Now, should we initiate a recall? Take the number of vehicles in the field, A, multiply it by the probable rate of failure, B, multiply by the average out-of-court settlement, C, A times B times C equals X. And if X is less than the cost of a recall, we don't do one. To which he asked, which car company do you work for? And he said, a major one. And the answer is, all of them, really. And it's not just safety issues, it's all kinds of things. Tesla recall, NHTSA has got 49 on here. And it lists how many vehicles affected, all that. Not trying to sugarcoat it and say that there have been none, but they're small, almost entirely. The last big serious one was when they 
did the recall to fix the battery issues on the Model S. The Model S used to sit a little lower to the ground at highway speed to improve uh, aerodynamic drag, to improve efficiency, to improve range. But if a piece of uh, obstacle, if, if a, something gets jammed under it, in one case it was a trailer hitch, came loose from a truck, pierced the battery pack, the fix was we are going to add <clears throat> a titanium plate to the bottom of these vehicles, but also we're going to make them ride one inch higher at highway speeds. Oh, and by the way, this letter you're getting that says that recall happened, we did it a week ago. It's already done. Just come in and get your titanium plate at your convenience. This is one that came in late. Thank you, Jeff, for suggesting it. J.D. Power came out with a new study. J.D. Power, the worst. EV service experience needs a charge. Get it? See, they're saying that, especially with premium vehicles, the EV experience is causing consumers to get very sad. They came up with some point system. They said, oh, it's a um, service. Well, anyway, recalls and service wait times decrease satisfaction. Well, that's true. 23 point decline. So who are the good car companies? Oh, my goodness. Let's find out. Lexus, that does not surprise me. They're very good at making cars. Porsche, um, that's good. Followed by Cadillac. If you say so. And then among mass market brands, Mitsubishi leads the ranking for the first time with a score of 884. Now, the big takeaway here is that Mitsubishi still sells cars in America. Did you know that? Let's see how many. Would you look at that? Last year, they sold 85,000 cars. That's like 750 a week. That's, that's anemic. That is not good sales. What, what are we? And the other one they said was Subaru. Yeah, Subaru did very well. Subaru, big company, famous company. They're only at about a half a million. A half a million. That's not great. And 2022 was worse than 2021. I would think that everything would have been getting back up to speed. I would have been mistaken. But what are these recalls? Forbes reports Tesla recalls 4 million cars since January of 2022. And here's how that compares. Well, that sounds really bad, especially since I don't think they'd made 4 million cars as of January of 2022. No, they hadn't. So that's interesting. I guess we're counting some cars twice. Now, this article is uh, fairly recent, less than a month old, about a month old. But what's kind of buried in here is they say, well, you know, uh, other companies have a lot. You know, Ford's got a lot. Twice as many cars, three, four times, almost four times as many recalls. Uh, General Motors, three and a half million cars. That's fewer than Tesla, but 34 recalls. So wait, how can Tesla have 4.1 million recalls on fewer? Th I feel like something's missing and I feel like it's missing on purpose. Let's find it. Uh-huh. Yeah, 81% of all recalls have been since January 2022. Well, that's because the software running on it is the same for all the cars. And if there's a software update that is deemed critical, it is done on all cars. Tangent, just a tangent, just something I feel like we should maybe mention. The vast amount, 99% of cars Tesla has recalled were fixed over the air. 99%. What are we doing here? Is this for real? This should be the headline. 99% of the cars. So that means 1% of 4 million. So that'd be uh, 40,000. 40,000 cars actually had to come back in for something. And it was, we saw what it was a minute ago, it was the brake lights or the, the brake light was coming loose, a nut needed to be tightened, things like that. So that's not such a big deal. Now we do have a poll going. Should these even be called recalls when really it's just a patch? Brian Roshetsky says it should be called updates. Someone earlier on had said a patch. There's a lot 
of uh, things you could call it. And the reason it doesn't have a different name is because it never needed one until recently. There's a point I'm getting at here. Now, you may have heard, oh, Teslas are being investigated for something. A loose steering wheel nut, for example. Do you know you can initiate a recall investigation by petition, by submitting a complaint? And if someone else also submits the same complaint, they may open up an investigation. On the loose steering wheel nut, there are only two people. And I mentioned this before, one of them has the same name as an engineer at Argo AI at one of Tesla's FSD competitors. That's potentially a conflict of interest and would raise some questions. Two cars out of four million, that means the odds that it happened to you are the same as the odds of flipping a coin and coming up heads 21 times in a row. Have a seat, pull out a coin, let me know when you get to 21. That's how silly it is. And it does have other criteria. And all of these will be in the show notes when the show ends. So this is an interesting one. This is a big PDF document giving examples of times when car companies chose not to do a recall. And we know some of them, but there's uh, a lot of times when a car company knows they should do a recall, but it just doesn't make financial sense. That's a bad reason to not do a recall. Um, and there's a lot of them. The airbags, the Takata airbags, they were very slow to recall those, and those were very serious. And a lot of these lead to deaths. And this document covers also food and refineries. It covers a lot of things they knew and they failed to. So yeah, drugs, consumer products, food safety, automobiles, environment. There's a lot. It's endless would be kind of a, an overstatement, but it feels like it when you try to read this quite lengthy document. So then you've got GM's scandal of 2024. Remember this guy? This was a lot of fun. What happened? Well, they knew that the ignition switches were faulty, but they didn't want to recall 2.6 million cars. It led to 97 deaths. They just didn't recall them. Now, Tesla doesn't have that incentive because they can just push the update. It just goes out. The only cost they have is mailing a letter telling you, by the way, there was an update. It's already updated. You're good. They knew about the faulty switches since 2003. Slow to fix the problem because it would have cost too much. And, and boy, did they get in trouble. What a slap on the wrist that was. GM had recalled 28 million vehicles in 2014. This should have sunk them. But what if it's the littler things? How many little things do we not know about because it didn't result in 97 deaths, but maybe one or two. I would argue that having a company that's able to push out a recall, a safety recall, in such an easy manner is a good thing. One of the safety recalls I remember that Tesla had to deal with was the California stops. In some places, FSD would do California stops. That's how you drive in those places. Um, coming to a full stop in some places will aggravate other drivers, can even result in uh, rear end collisions because why in the heck did you actually stop at a stop sign? It's, it's not the law, it's a suggestion in some places, it feels like. Now it is the law, so they fixed it. But here's the real problem. If you have a recall on a vehicle, it's a big hassle. My buddy had a Ford Taurus and it was recalled because the fuel gauge would sometimes say you still had gas when you didn't and you'd run out of gas. Never happened to him, but he got a recall notice, so he took it in. And what they did was just change the calibration on it. So from then on, when it said he was on empty, he really had a quarter tank. He had no way of knowing how full his gas tank actually was unless it was over a quarter tank. Then he knew he had some gas, but not how much. 
it effectively shortened the range of his Ford Taurus. He got another recall notice a year later for something else, and he didn't take it in because it's a hassle. It takes time. You don't get a service loan, or at least he didn't. And the end result was less desirable than before. Nah, we'll ride it out. It's like how Microsoft, with their updates, they were so prone to breaking the OS that nobody would do them. And it would lead to massive vulnerabilities later. Microsoft themselves got hacked because they themselves wouldn't update. They knew it was easier to just ride it out and see how it goes. As a result, one in six cars on the road has not been fixed. There are at least 45 million vehicles on the road that suffer from an unrepaired safety problem subject to an outstanding recall. This could be your car. It's not mine, I checked. You check your oil, tune the engine, all that, but you may be still riding around in a four-wheel time bomb. 45 million vehicles on the road has an unrepaired problem. Now that's kind of a shocking number. Even minor recalls still require a fix. Yeah, it could be something tiny. It could be a latch. It could be a bolt. It could be uh, a loose uh, attachment somewhere that could short circuit and burn you up to death. But who knows? And it's because it's such a hassle. I'd rather have a car that uh, can not, uh, that can be updated very easily over the air. And I would like it to not be called a recall, because that's really not what it is. <laughs> yeah, Jeff points out, wheels falling off your Toyota Buzz Forks. Yeah, that's not ideal. And that's a big one. Those I assume got addressed. And I assume the way they did it was by taking off the bolts, squirting on some Loctite, and super gluing the bolts back on. It's a good fix. It works. Makes it a little harder to service in the future, but hey, man, what are you going to do? So why do they do it, man? Why do they do it? So that's where I'm at with that. Let's get into the Q&A. I do want to thank my patrons who get early access, bonus content, and ad-free experience in many cases. All that good stuff. It's a little bit out of date. Got some new names I shared at the beginning of the show. Well, there it is, and there you go. If you want to watch the complete 30-ish minute version, head on over to the second channel, My Tesla Live, where the uh, whole thing goes out each Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific. Yeah, join in the conversation. Thanks, as always, to everyone else. Like, subscribe, do the usual thing, and stay tuned, stay juicy, and I can't wait to hear from you clever robots on the live channel.